Hi, this is Adam Kessler, and we're going to talk about our new uh, recovery program. And you know, basically, I appreciate the mentality of athletes and, and people to try to push through uh, injuries, and and if they've been run ragged, you know, to say, oh, I can do it, I can do it. But I think we have the technology to train smarter and get your body in a better uh, position to succeed. And that's what this recovery program is going to be. So uh, this intro video is going to be a quick synopsis about uh, what this will entail. So uh, what we'll be able to do with this program is we'll be able to know truly when your athlete is fully recovered from training, a game, a competition. Um, if they had a rough rough game the next day maybe they need to back off just a little bit maybe they need to take some time to rest maybe they're good to go uh, but we'll have a real good idea as far as how the body is responding based on the data that we see uh, we'll be able to figure out the caloric expenditure needs for your athletes depending on what he or she is going to be doing so we will get a good idea as far as how many calories this individual spends on a normal day, on a practice day, on a game day, tournament weekend, etc., and we can uh, then we can start planning accordingly. So if we have their schedule and we know a big showcase is coming up, or we know a big track meet is coming up, or the big basketball league game, um, we can plan accordingly to make sure that they are properly fueled for the those particular contests. Um, we'll also be able to know when your athlete is starting to come down with a sickness or a cold that could affect performance and how we can get on top of it. I'm not saying we can eliminate them and it's, it's, but, uh, as I'll show you here in a second, we'll be able to, all right, let's start hydrating or let's start getting a little bit more rest or so we can hopefully lessen the blow of that sickness or that cold. And this doesn't have to be for athletes. This can be for fitness enthusiasts. I, I have, I wear, I actually do this program, and, and you'll learn about this whoop band here in a second, but I wear this whoop band, and uh, it helps me with my workouts, and, and if I don't have the right recovery percentage, then I, I change my, my uh, workout accordingly. So let's um, move on. How did this work? Quick synopsis. We'll show you here in a second, but we're utilizing the whoop band technology, and that's the website whoop.com. Uh, it's a wearable device. Uh, you can wear it in the water. I, I take it off when I take showers, but I pretty much have it on me all the time. And the data that you'll see that it collects helps us determine if your athlete is recovered and, and ready to rock and roll. Um, and it's very interesting stuff. So let's start off. Um, if you decide to do the program, uh, I've created teams within the Whoop Band app and I can then invite you to be part of our team. So what I'm showing you right now, I've just isolated it to myself and my daughter. Um, so these three screens, are, this is the data that I would see on a daily basis from, from you or your athlete. Uh, now, in the app itself, it goes through a lot more details. And, and so for my own personal, I, I can see a whole lot more, but I cannot see Anna's um, unless I actually take her phone and look through the data itself. So this is the data that I am presented with on a daily basis. So if your athlete wakes up in the morning, uh, sync the app with Whoop Band so I can see how everything uh, transpired from the previous day. And then if, before they go to bed, maybe sync it one more time um, so that I can see that, that type of data. But here's what we're looking at. So the first thing I look at is, is the recovery. So if they... Uh, are able to sync it in the morning. I'm able to see that uh, HRVs or heart rate variability, and, and I'm not going to go into too much detail, but it, it really responds to the, the nervous system. Uh, the higher the number, the better, and it's individualized per, per person. So uh, it's based on age, gender, your activity level, and so forth. So someone like me, who I'm a little bit older than my daughter, obviously, I will never have an HRV that is in triple digits. Probably not going to happen just because of my, my age. Um, but this is a typical HRV for her. Um, she's uh, one of the top sprinters in the state, so it's very important that we figure out if she's recovered uh, so she can be ready for her practices and meets. This is resting heart rate. 
uh, the lower the better. And this is her recovery score. So 58% is, is pretty good. Uh, she could have a good workout this particular day if that was what was called for. Uh, the next thing I'll look at is how much sleep did she get? Well, she only got six hours of sleep. That's 67% of what she really needed. Um, you, you will learn very quickly that sleep is the key to um, a lot of this, re this recovery. And then for this particular day, all she did was lift. Uh, this is her strain, 9.4. A max out day for strain is 21. Uh, you, were, you were doing all sorts of stuff. So, And she burned 1,300 almost 1400 calories. So this is, this is a typical day. And what I want you to pay attention to is, is remember her recovery was 58, her HRV was 120, her resting heart rate was 51. Um, it was kind of a lightish, mediumish day strain wise, just did the lifting. So if we look at the next day, this is Saturday the 15th, um, her recovery is down 31%. Well, she didn't do much yesterday. All she did was a light workout, light lifting. But her HRV dropped over, you know, 20 points or even more. Resting heart rate went up. So if if we get something in the red, that's a sign that her body is not recovered, and we really need to look at what she's going to be doing during that day. Uh, she got eight hours, 46 minutes of sleep, which is 95 percent of what she needed, which was good. That if it was less, that could have been worse probably. And uh, she burned 1,800 calories that day, a very light strain, so we didn't do much. But the first thing I do is I text her in the morning, how are you feeling today? And my younger daughter had been battling a cold, and she said, I think I might be coming down with Morgan's cold. I just feel blah. We've got a track meet the next day. All right, let's start hydrating, maybe take some zinc, some other home remedies that you do for colds, but let's try to start getting ahead of it. Um, hydration is really big. It helps flush it out the system and, and really helps try to speed up this recovery from the, from a cold or what have you. So, all right. So we're already in, in a rough shape. She's got to meet the next day. Uh, so let's, and we try to keep it very light for her. She just kind of laid around and did whatever. So the next day we look at, uh, her recoveries jumped up a little bit to 39%. So it's out of the red. Her HRV went up a little bit. Her resting heart rate went down a little bit. So, all right, we're, we're getting a little bit better. Um, her HRV normally is in the triple digits, so that's a number that we kind of look at. But she got over eight and a half hours of sleep, which is 100% of what she needed. Um, you know, she's got a meet today, so that was, that was huge to get that proper sleep, to get her in the best position possible. She did say she felt better than the day before, so hopefully that was just a minor thing and, was, and it's getting flushed out of her system. So let's look at the day strain. So it, she ran three races this throughout the day, and this was the strain she put on her body, 19.1. A max is 21. She burned 30, almost 3,700 calories for that particular day. So with that data, we know the previous two days she'd been burning maybe 1,800 calories. And so for future, if we know there's a big track meet coming up, we need to start upping the, the calories that she's eaten the days leading up to that event. Uh, and then the days after, still probably up the calories to replenish all this energy that she's she wasted on this or used for this particular day. Um, so that being said, she had a high level strain. Let's see what her what Monday is like when she wakes up and what her recovery level is. Uh, so if we go, she's at 51%. So she actually increased her recovery percentage uh, to 51%. Her HRV went back up into triple digits. Her resting heart rate was a little higher. Um, and that's probably because of the, all the strain she put on the day before. Now, the big reason why she got that 51% is right here. Uh, her sleep. She got 10 hours of sleep. Uh, that was a, over 100% of what her, her body needed for that particular day, which is awesome. That's how you're going to recover. And I think if she had if she got what I got, which was six hours of sleep, there's no way that recovery would have been 51%. So if we actually were going to have a practice that day, she, she probably could have handled it, you know, depending on the intensity of the workout because she was at 51%. Um, 
So you can see where sleep plays a big role in, in the recovery, what she needs to do. And then we kept, she didn't do anything. It was a holiday that day. Her strain was 4.4 for the day, 1,800 calories. Now she's back to her normal caloric intake. So for this day, though, we probably try to get close to 2,500 calories in to help replenish the 3,600 that she had the day before. Uh, so this is the recovery program, and I'll be sending out more videos about some of the different intricacies of, of the WHOOP band and the technology and how we can help you and help your athlete. Uh, but if you want to uh, read more details, look at the introductory rate. We're that could change after 10 participants or registrants. Um, this is the website and you'll see that more in the description as well. Uh, click the link there. Um, but that's, that's it. That's, uh, what we're doing. And hopefully you find it about as interesting as, as I do.